When Apple released the new M4 Mac Mini, it was rightfully praised as the best valued Mac desktop that you could buy. Not only was it cheaper than the M2 Max Mac Studio, but in many regards, it was faster than it as well. However, Apple just announced a brand new M4 Max Mac Studio, finally giving this computer a fair shot against the new Mac Mini. So which one delivers the best value for most users and which one should you buy? Now, yes, at the time of making this video, I do not have a new M4 Max Mac Studio. This is the old one, but listen, this is just a desktop version of an existing chip that is already in my 16 inch MacBook Pro, a chip that I have used and many people have run tests on. So I think we can fairly evaluate the differences between these two computers so you can make an informed decision before you purchase one. That is also why for this video, I will not be taking a look at the M3 Ultra Mac Studio because that is a brand new chip that has never been in a Mac before. And I just don't have enough information about that new chip to fairly give you a recommendation. <sighs> Woo! All right, first let's talk about the design of these two computers because while the Mac Studio certainly in the world of desktop PCs is very small, the Mac Mini, it is just on another level. It looks so small next to the Mac Studio and because of that, you can fit the Mac Mini really anywhere. It takes up very little space on your desk or under your TV. You can put it in your bathroom. You can flush this thing down the toilet, I'm sure. I've taken bigger poops than this Mac Mini. Now, as impressive as the small size of the Mac Mini is, at the end of the day, the Mini and the Studio, they're both small. They're both going to fit on your desk, no problem. And they both fit nicely under Apple Studio Display. So as cute as this computer is, I really wouldn't consider size as an option but you should consider ports. Now, the Mac Mini has a commendable amount of ports. It has two USB-C ports on the front, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and on the back, you have three ultra-fast Thunderbolt 5 USB-C ports, an HDMI port, and an ethernet port. Now, while the mini has a lot of ports, the studio, of course, takes it to the next level because it has all the ports that the Mac mini has, plus one more Thunderbolt 5 USB-C port, two USB-A ports, an SD card slot, and the ethernet port on the Mac studio is a faster 10 gigabit ethernet port, whereas in the Mac mini, that is an optional $100 upgrade. Now, one hidden benefit of the M4 Max Mac studio is that it can support up to five external displays at once, whereas the M4 Pro Mac mini can only drive three external monitors at once. So this is where the size really matters. It's about having access to more ports on the Mac studio and not anything else. Now listen, most of you are probably watching this video not based on which computer you should get based on how small it is or the port options, but you're probably just trying to figure out, is the Mac Studio worth the additional $600 over the M4 Pro Mac Mini? Because these machines are targeted at very similar audiences. Well, the first thing you need to consider is what type of performance you need. And there's a few areas you want to look at, like CPU performance, GPU performance, and the total amount of available memory that you will need. Now let's start with CPU performance because on the Mac mini and the Mac studio, the base level chips are going to offer very similar CPU performance. Now, if you don't know what CPU performance is, I can break it down in a broad sense that the tasks that benefit the most from CPU performance are things like opening an app, like how fast it opens, or more complex tasks like processing audio or video, data processing, software development, server or cloud computing, virtualization, productivity and multitasking, and certain types of scientific computations or simulations. You got me sounding like a nerd over here. Obviously, because these both have M4 chips, even though it's an M4 Pro and an M4 Max, they both have the same single core CPU performance. So tasks like opening up or running simple apps should be the same on both computers. So the real difference is in multi-core CPU performance for those more intensive tasks I listed above. Now, the base model Mac mini comes with a 12-core CPU, whereas the base model Mac Studio comes with a 14-core CPU. And you may think two more CPU cores, wow, that's gonna be so much better than the Mac mini and lead to a huge difference in multi-core CPU performance. But that's not true. Both chips perform pretty similarly. In fact, there's only an 8% performance increase 
on the base model M4 Max Mac Studio. Now, you'll probably notice that the Mac Mini has an optional $200 M4 Pro chip upgrade that will get you this same 8% performance boost, and that still makes this $400 cheaper than the Mac Studio. Now, to be fair to the Mac Studio, it also has an optional chip upgrade that will pack in an even bigger punch because this upgrades the M4 Max chip to a 16 core CPU. And this is where you get an even bigger boost in CPU performance with an 18% increase in multi-core CPU performance over the M4 Pro. However, this is a $300 additional upgrade on the M4 Max Mac Studio. Now, if you had to ask me, just from a CPU perspective, I don't think the upgrade on the Mac Studio makes sense over the Mac Mini at the base level model. You are paying a big premium for a very small increase in multi-core CPU performance that I don't think is worth it. The 16 core makes more sense, but again, it's $300 more for that chip, bringing the cost up to $2,300, a $700 premium over the 14 core Mac Mini. Now, the reason why the M4 Max chip is so expensive isn't because of these additional CPU cores, it's because Apple places a lot more emphasis on the GPU cores for this chip. And that's where you start to see a huge performance advantage for the M4 Max. For example, the base model has a 30 core GPU, almost double the amount of cores on the base level M4 Pro Mac Mini that only has 16 cores. And in a metal GPU benchmark, you could see around a 45% increase in performance on the Mac Studio over this M4 Pro Mac Mini. And no, the additional $200 M4 Pro chip upgrade on the Mini is not going to save it this time because that only upgrades it to a 20 core count, 10 less than the base model Mac Studio. In that same benchmark, it only results in a 10% performance increase for the M4 Pro, meaning the Mac Studio still has a 35% performance advantage. That is not even counting the additional $300 upgrade to the full 40 core M4 Max chip, which does boost this number even higher, a whopping 54% increase over the 20 core M4 Pro model. Now I know, I just threw a bunch of numbers and percentages at you, so what do they actually mean? Well, from my perspective, I really only think the upgrade to the Mac Studio makes sense if you also have tasks that you want to do that involve the GPU. That is where you are getting the best bang for your buck on that M4 Max chip. And honestly, not everyone needs a stronger GPU. You should really only care about this spec if you're doing something like gaming, 3D rendering, animation, video effects, or AI development, or something like that, right? These are common tasks where having a stronger GPU can make quite a difference. So if you want faster frame rates or want to run games at higher resolutions or render out a project faster, you'll benefit from this M4 Max chip. Now, there's really only one more difference that you should consider between these two computers, and that is the memory configurations, which can get a little weird because the M4 Pro Mac Mini starts at 24 gigabytes of memory, where the M4 Mac Studio starts at 32 gigabytes of memory. Now, when is memory beneficial? I assume you guys have some basic understanding of computer knowledge. I probably shouldn't have to explain this. All right, I will. Uh, so basically, if you multitask a lot, you have a lot of apps open, you use virtual desktops, you deal with like high res files and like Photoshop or your video editing, chances are you'll want more memory. But I must stress that even the default memory on these machines are probably fine for most users. That being said, the Mac mini has three memory options, 24 gigabytes, 48 gigabytes, and 64 gigabytes. One of the advantages about going for the Mac mini over the Mac studio is you can upgrade the memory all the way to 64 gigabytes on the base level chip. And in fact, you can get a 48 gigabyte configuration of the Mac mini for still $200 less than the 32 gigabyte Mac studio. Now, while the base model Mac Studio comes with a respectable 32 gigabytes of memory, if you want more memory, you have to select the $300 chip upgrade. And then something else happens that I didn't talk about before because there is no $2,300 version of the Mac Studio. I lie to you, it does not exist because Apple forces you to upgrade to 48 gigabytes of memory on the 40 core M4 Max chip bringing the total price of this Mac Studio up to $2,500. Yes, it does not matter whether or not you wanted more memory or you just wanted a faster CPU or a faster GPU, you are stuck upgrading to this model no matter what. 
Now with this config, you can upgrade to 64 gigabytes of memory for $200 more or all the way up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory for $1,000 more, but that does bring the price up to $3,500. So if you're at that level, you probably don't need my advice. This is all to say that if you need more memory on a budget, the Mac mini is actually the better option. You have a lot more flexibility to upgrade this Mac mini then you do the more expensive Mac Studio. Well, what about storage? Well, actually this is an easy comparison because the storage options are exactly the same. Both the M4 Pro Mini and the M4 Max Mac Studio start at 512 gigabytes of storage and they can both be upgraded all the way up to eight terabytes. Finally, I don't have to talk about storage on Macs. Thank you, Tim. All right, so I told you all the differences. I am losing my voice. Let's finish this video. Which one should you get? The M4 Mac Mini or the M4 Mac Studio? Well, as you know, there is no one size fits all answer, but I think the Mac mini is the best choice for people that are on a budget that don't need or care about GPU performance. It has a good mix of ports, power, memory, and storage at a great price point. And it's more flexible in its upgrade paths than the Mac Studio. It's probably the Mac desktop most users should get. Now, I think the Mac Studio is a great computer and it gives you an even more powerful machine with more ports and more starting memory. 32 gigabytes is a very good sweet spot for most pro users and chances are you won't need more. However, I still think that this upgrade really only makes sense, not for the USB-A ports or something like that. It really only makes sense if you need better GPU performance that is when this computer delivers on its value. All right, but that is my buyer's guide on the new M4 Max Mac Studio versus the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Please let me know in the comments below, which one do you plan on getting? If you do plan on getting either one of these computers, please consider using my description, my affiliate link in the description below. I got a little confused because Mac was turned the wrong way. Uh, if you like the video, give me a like. If you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one. I need a cough drop.